Hey guys, and welcome back to Becca Does Stuff. Many of you seem to have enjoyed my realistic and ugly zero waste videos, so today I'm making part three of this mini series. A few years ago, the zero waste movement was popularized by a handful of people who claimed to fit all their trash into a mason jar. Nothing they purchased came in packaging. They DIY'd all their personal care and cleaning products. Everything they owned was a shade of beige or white, and all their food was bought fresh from the farmer's market that they biked to. I did good. I did good. And hey, that's awesome if you can live that way, but the reality is most of us can't. And while that image of perfection may have inspired many of us, it also simultaneously left many feeling guilty for not doing enough. Boy, that escalated quickly. I'm so glad that this community has moved past that and it takes interest in the reality of low waste living for the average person. And so here we are again talking about more ways in which my low waste intentional life is, well, kind of ugly. The first thing on my list today is I save egg cartons. We have a friend who raises chickens and can always use the extra cartons. I've also brought some egg cartons to the farmer's market for the chicken farmers to use. And you guys know that I'll save all kinds of things like jars to reuse, but whether it's getting reused or it's getting recycled, the fact of the matter is that labels need to be removed and they need to be cleaned out. And until I'm ready to do that, they just sit here on my counter waiting to be cleaned. It's not pretty. And along the same lines, underneath my sink, I have this baking soda olive oil mixture. I try to remove labels from the jars before I recycle them or reuse them. And sometimes soaking them in water doesn't do anything, but if I slather them with this paste and let it sit a few hours, I can usually scrape those labels right off, give it a good rinse, and those bottles are as good as new. And although I own stasher bags, I still save and reuse any plastic bag that my food came in that has a resealable top. So like this bone broth one, this rice one, almond flour one, coconut flour, you name it. They can easily be reused just like any typical Ziploc bag. You know, put your cheese or nuts or whatever food you like to put in a bag. You can put it in there, reseal it, pop it back in the freezer or the refrigerator. And when it comes to my art supplies, I mean, I save all kinds of different containers to use mostly for mixing paints in, but you know, whatever else I can use it for. It's crazy how much stuff I have been able to reuse just for art projects alone. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saving all of my trash, but I am saving some of it. Little things like this, I'm saving in this plastic bottle and I'm making a trash brick, also known as bottle bricking. I heard about this from Emma from The Simple Environmentalist. So a bottle bricking is really neat. What you're doing is you're taking the little pieces of like plastic things like this that can't be recycled and would possibly just end up blowing away in the wind, ending up in a bird's mouth in the waterways, etc. And you're putting it in the bottle and you're packing it in there real tight until it becomes like a brick. Once it has become very strong and stiff like a brick, it can either be landfilled where the stuff will be more contained rather than easily blown away, or some people use it to build things like benches and houses and just all kinds of stuff. If you're curious about bottle bricking, you can go to greenmatters.com and they have an article on there all about trash bricks. And I kind of have a thing for little tins. So instead of tossing these, I find other uses for them. These ones I use for my meds. I have to take certain vitamins and medicines with me, um, sometimes on the go. And so I like that they're nice and compact. They can fit right in my purse. They're kind of discreet. And then I save this lidded tin that I think once had zero waste deodorant in it, and I save it to put my spent razor blades in. So once my blades are dull, I pop them in there. I also save some of those metal serrated um, strips that come on the aluminum foil boxes, you know, the parts where you tear the aluminum foil off. I think that it's probably safer to dispose of those inside a container like this rather than just throwing it in the trash where somebody who's handling the trash could easily hurt themselves. So I save them in this container until I'm ready to properly dispose of them. 
Okay, this one's really random, but this is a plastic part to an old food chopper and I use it as a soap holder. <laughs> now hear me out. In my master shower, there's a like little indentation in the wall where you're supposed to be able to put the soap and it always falls out of there. And I'm like, you had one job. <laughs> but anyway, this thing, I don't know if you can tell, but it has these little grippy bumps on it. So it, it works well to hold my soap on there. And since that food chopper thing that it came with is no longer in existence because it broke, I figured, you know what? I'm going to get some use out of this part. And the last thing on my list today is spray bottles that I reuse. I had some Method household cleaner spray bottles that my boyfriend and I would wash out and I used to use it for my Blue Land cleaners and other things like that. But I think the pumps broke. But anyway, I have these ones which aren't terribly ugly, but honestly, they could use some of that paste on them to remove that... Uh, residue there. But I save spray bottles, rinse them out really well, and make my own cleaners. And that is it for today's episode of My Realistic and Ugly Zero Waste Living. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up as it helps the channel grow. Until next time, I hope you are all well and taking really good care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.